Today I'm going to finish the lateral surface of the skull regarding the craniocerebral topography by taking a look at the craniometric lines that we have to know on this surface. Let's take a look at the orbit. We see the upper border, the lower border which is called the orbital, and the lateral side which is the location of the canthus of the eye. Also we see the outer part of the external auditory canal. Its upper border is called the borion, while its middle is called the meatus. There is a note here. The lower border of the orbit, the so-called orbital, is exactly at the same horizontal line of the upper border of the external auditory canal, the so-called borion. So, if we imagine a line connecting these two points, it will be the Frankfurt horizontal line. This line is opposite to the deepest point of the middle cranial fossa with a variation around plus or minus 7 mm. The Frankfurt line is important also in anthropology and orthodontics. In some cases, the burion is difficult to be seen, such as in cases of squamous bone fracture. So that there is a new study that had mentioned a substitute for the Frankfurt line and called it the orbito-occipital line as it connects the orbital to the anion. You can notice that there is a very little or even negligible difference between the two lines. So you can consider it a modification of the Frankfurt line. So this is the Frankfurt line and let's go to the another line now. This line connects the canthus to the meatus. So it is called the original orbitometal line or the canthometal line. I said original because there is also a modification for that line. But at first we need to know the importance of this line. It is the line of the scout of the CD scan because it covers the three fossae from the start, including a major part from the posterior foss. But there is a big disadvantage of this line. When the scout of CT is taken along the canthometer line, a large dose of X-ray will be delivered to the lens of the eye, which is hazardous. This is the reason why there is a modification of this line. The anterior point was transferred into the upper border of the orbit instead of the cancer, so that the lens can be protected from the high dose, and therefore the line will be called the new orbitometer line. In fact, there is another line that can be used for the scout of CT. It is a totally different line called the bicommissural line. It connects between the upper anterior commissure and the lower posterior commissure. It is slightly more angled than the canthometer line, and it is the standard scout of MRI, but also it can be used as a scout in a CT scan. The next lines now are collectively called the Taylor Houghton lines. Here they are. The first one is a curved line connecting the nasion to the inion in the mid sagittal section. We can call it line A. The second line is perpendicular to the previously mentioned Frankfurt line, but passing over the mastoid tip, and let's call it line B. The third one is also perpendicular to the Frankfurt line, but passing on the condyle of the mandible, and so it's the condylar line or line C. These lines are used to estimate the location of the central sulcus and the sylvian sulcus or the sylvian fissure. They are not so accurate, but we have to understand the idea behind them. At first, let's take a look at line A. We need to define two important points along this line. The first point is at the midpoint of this line, which is the red point. The second point is at the three-fourths of this line, and it is the green point. If we add 2 cm in the posterior direction after the midpoint, we can accurately define the posterior end of the central sulcus. This is the only accurate thing in the taylor houghton line. Line B usually intersects line A at the same point, but the central sulcus can run in different directions. In some cases, it runs more anterior towards the coronal suture, while in other cases, it runs a little bit posterior to this direction. The average direction can be estimated by extending a line from this point to intersect the line C or the condylar line, and this is how the central sulcus is estimated using Taylor Houghton lines. Then, how the sylvian fissure is estimated? If we connect the green point to the canthus point, this is the direction of the sylvian fissure. 
now we have finished all the craniometric lines of the lateral surface of the skull thanks for watching